for my 30 days of live. I did miss yesterday, um, so that's what I'm actually here to talk about because I missed yesterday because um, I am dealing with PMDD right now. If you don't know what PMDD is, it is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. What I like to say, PMDD is like PMS on crack. Um, it can look really different for a lot of women, but for me, I'll speak to my experience, PMDD looks like pretty severe mood swings. Like even right now, I feel like I'm on the edge of tears, even though I'm just trying to describe to you what this is. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, so I get PMDD before I was medicated for it. I would get it like seven to 10 days out before my period. And I would experience like extreme depression. See, I feel like I'm about to start crying and there's nothing that would trigger to me to cry right now. Um, but I'm gonna not cry, <clears throat> if I can help it. <laughs> um, so that was um, when I was like in my late 20s, I started developing it. And I really had no idea what I was going through at all. Um, I really didn't even actually connect it to the fact that I was feeling extreme depression before my period. Um, and it wasn't until, I don't know, I probably suffered like really bad for like three years where every month I'd have seven days where I was, it wasn't just like a little depression. It, it was like severe depression. That's why that's the difference between PMDD and PMS because some people, you know, when they experience PMS, they're like, oh yeah, I feel, I feel kind of sad <laughs> before my period or I feel more frustrated or I feel more, um, I feel, you know, more anxious or whatever, but PMDD, I'm actually, I'm still talking to y'all, but I'm going to look at this mirror because it's actually just easier, is whatever, whatever symptoms you might have on, um, with PMS, it's just next level. That's why I say PMS on crack. So for me, it looks like severe depression and that's what I'm feeling right now and that's why I didn't come on my live yesterday even though I'm trying to do the month of April alive every day um but yesterday I was struggling so I want to tell y'all what I did because um I want to try to bring awareness to PMDD and awareness of what to do about it so first and foremost I um I am medicated for it so I take an antidepressant specifically for PMDD because I seem to be okay um, most other times. <laughs> I seem to be okay. Um, but I am not okay <clears throat> during those times. So that's the first thing I'm doing. Um, my doctor did recommend, so I'm on a, I'm on a dose that's um, not considered to be super high. I'm on 50 milligrams of Zoloft a day. My doctor did recommend during my PMDD times, um, like five, three to five days out from my period to maybe increase my dose to 75 or 100. Um, I have never, ever done that except for today. <laughs> today, I was like, you know what? I am going to do it because um, yesterday was so hard. So I'm going to describe to you what it's like for me. So yesterday yesterday was Tuesday right yeah and on Monday on Monday I felt totally fine I knew I'm supposed to start my period at some point is coming I'm also perimenopausal so I've told y'all before like periods are just more irregular um they're not on <laughs> they, they they come and go when they feel like it y'all like it's just not a season of regularity for me <laughs> at this time so I am slathering a gel by the way because I'm gonna slick this back but so Monday, I was feeling totally fine. Like, I'm good, feeling good, life is good. You know, just trying to figure out my regular schmegular, you know, things. I mean, a little tiny bit more stress because I have my daughter this week while her dad's out of town and we usually split custody, but that's, you know, nothing to make me feel depressed. So I was feeling totally fine. And then Tuesday, I woke up, this was yesterday, and just felt a sense of dread, um, just a strong sense of dread. like. Like, I can't get out of bed. Um, and then I knew, like, oh, shit, it's here. <laughs> the PM deity is here. And um, also, of note, I still haven't actually started my period yet. So that's 
another indicator that this is indeed PMDD because usually when my period comes, it actually all calms down. Oh, I just dropped the thing. So, so I woke up with a sense of dread and then um, I took my daughter to school. The whole time I took her to school, I felt so, so, so anxious. Just an unrelenting feeling of anxiety in my body. Um, when I got back, I was like, okay, I'm going to do a few things that will I know will help me. One is a meditation, um, just sitting down and listening to like a 10 to 15 minute medication, meditation. And then I was like, I'm also going to um, drink some hot tea just because it's soothing for your body and do my like diaphragmatic breathing. The whole time I was doing that, um, I can feel my heart racing. My stomach is, it just feels troubled. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have, and when you feel, when you have anxiety or like have a panic attack, like your stomach just feels troubled, almost like I can feel my heartbeat in my belly. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but it's a very, um, basically a dysregulated nervous system. Like now I know very, very acutely what that feels like. So I'm actually feeling it right now too. I don't know if you can hear my voice, like my voice is trembling a little bit. You hear that? I'm a little bit out of breath. Um... It just feels like maybe like I look and feel like I've been running is what it feels like to me. Yesterday, it was worse than it is right now. So I'm deep breathing. I'm trying really, really, really hard yesterday to calm it. So had drunk the tea, had meditated. That didn't really do too much. Um, it was almost just like, I don't know. It was like shooting a gun at a asteroid or something <laughs> is what it felt like I was doing yesterday. So then I was like uh, feeling so intensely anxious that I decided like, I'm just gonna lay down. Now, thankfully I was home yesterday. I was able to do that. Um, you know, I've been in times where I've struggled through this, where I was at work, I wasn't able to do anything like that. <sighs> but I was thankful, so I laid, that I was able to lay down. So I went in here and in my room and lay down. I listened to another meditation. I let myself fall asleep. <laughs> the minute I woke up, heart is racing all the anxiety came flush back it was like the <clears throat> the sleep just it just helped relieve that like small moment. so um what else did i do oh so then i decided i was going to leave my friend a message because sometimes um social just you know social network social i'm not talking about social networks networking with friends talking to people like just connections community can really help me feel better so I left a message for one of my girls um, and then I decided to go out for a walk um, because that's also another thing that really helps my mental health. I knew it wasn't going to help all the way, but yesterday it was really warm here. Um, it Well, not really warm. Warm for Michigan. It was like 60, 60 something. Um, <clears throat> so I went outside. That helped a little bit. That helped a little bit. That's usually my go-to. Came back in. I was still feeling really, really, really heightened levels of sadness. So I decided to color. <laughs> so y'all, I was really not productive yesterday, just trying to just trying to regulate my nervous system a little bit. On any normal on any normal day, doing any one of those things would immediately help, especially just going outside. Um, I colored for a little while and then I went in to go pick up my daughter from, from school and my son's from school. Um, when we got back. Um, I knew that if we like sat down and all ate dinner together that I would feel a little bit better. And I did just from being around them. Um, another thing I did when I saw my son, my sons are 14 and 18, by the way. They're both bigger than me, <laughs> taller than me. So when, as soon as I saw the 14 year old, I went over and just gave him a hug. Um, I didn't tell him like, by the way, I need to co-regulate my, my nervous system with yours. I need 30 seconds of physical touch. I didn't tell him that. I just I just hugged him. And uh, my 14-year-old is the one who's not, he's not as touchy-feely. So after like maybe 15 seconds, he was like, okay, okay, mama, okay, okay. So, but then when we got in the house and when I started making dinner, my 18-year-old was in the kitchen just snacking and stuff. And so I, I hugged him. <clears throat> and he'll let me hug him for a long time. So I just kind of, he's way taller than me. So I just kind of like put my head on his shoulder and I just stood there and just was taking deep breaths. Um, and I didn't tell them that I was feeling depressed. Um, 
yeah, because I, <clears throat> I go back and forth with that. I think my kids know sometimes, but especially when I just need like physical touch, <laughs> I just think it's weird to like be like, hey, son, can I, can I get some physical touch because I need some? I don't know, but hopefully they just for the exchange for them is just oh my mom loves me wants to hug me and the exchange for me helps me physically regulate appropriately um <clears throat> because you know i'm single i don't have a i don't have a partner i don't have anyone in my life that i'm touching on <laughs> in any way so so um so the hugs really really help the hugs for my son's help and it's different with my daughter because she's seven and her hugs are like obnoxious. You know how seven-year-olds are. Just obnoxious. <clears throat> By the way, I'm just putting my hair up and slick back because I'm going to throw a wig over it once I get done with my makeup. So anyway, so I hugged them. That actually helped. Had dinner with them. That actually helped. And then after, um, then after dinner, I sat in the living room and, and I was trying to disassociate real hardcore. Um, my my favorite way to disassociate is on my phone um and so I was just trying to be on my phone not pay attention to them and they were talking and laughing together and I was like if you don't pay attention to your phone and pay attention to your kids like you will probably feel a little bit better so put my phone down tried to like laugh and talk with them and then my son was like um I really, he was like, I just really, really want some nachos and guacamole. <laughs> and as soon as he said that, I was like, I'll go. Because it was just like, I just was like, I just want to run. You know? That's the sad thing about PMDDs. <clears throat> That's what these days look like. It just like, it looks like I want to sleep. I want to um, run away. I want to be quiet. I want to be by myself. I want to isolate. And what I've realized with PMDD is that the more you do that, the longer you prolong feeling better. Like, it doesn't actually... You know, being around my kids, hugging my sons, coloring, taking a nap, meditating, all that stuff doesn't like treat the fact that I have these this flush of hormones running through my body besides perimenopause, but it does actually help me feel better even in little ways. Does that make sense? So, so I was like, okay, I'll go get it, you know, just so I could leave. I knew, I knew it was because I wanted to disassociate because any other day if I was feeling normal, I'd be like, boy, bye. Like I am not about to leave the house we are in I'm making dinner we have more than enough snacks and food here like deal with what we eat what we have <laughs> but I just wanted to run so bad I just wanted to get out <clears throat> so while I was out y'all getting these chips and guacamole I just felt awful I felt terrible terrible <clears throat> soon as I came back just being around them I felt better so that was like another reminder, like, don't run, don't disassociate, just stay in the moment. I colored a little bit before I went to bed and then went to bed. Woke up feeling the same, same sadness. Um, I am feeling a little better just being on here, even though I don't know y'all. <laughs> I know a few of y'all. Um, and even though we're not even like interacting, it does make me feel a little better, but I have felt crushing sadness today. My body is still feeling majorly dysregulated. <sighs> it really, really sucks. PMDD really sucks. And I think because of how I felt today, I also have a job interview today. So, um, you know, so I'm going to be masking today. And, you know, masking is what it sounds like pretending. You know, I'm not pretending on here. I'm not even pretending at all that I'm okay. That I'm happy. <laughs> I'm not pretending to y'all that life is okay. I'm just trying to be honest. But I'm not going to go into a job interview today and be like, yeah, I feel like shit. My body is completely dysregulated. <laughs> My nervous system is feeling completely out of whack. My heart's beating super fast. My stomach is turning. I feel hopeless. I feel like I want to disappear and life sucks. So, can I have the job? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to mask. Um, probably disassociate. <clears throat> I'm probably going to pretend. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How You know, everything's great. You know, because that's how you survive. <laughs> that's how you survive. But it really sucks. Um, at the same time, at the same time, science tells us what we know from, about neuroscience I need a towel. Is that um, 
your brain doesn't know the difference <clears throat> between pretending and not pretending. So for me to pretend to go in there and pretend like everything's okay today will actually probably help me feel a little bit better because my brain will be like, oh, we're okay. Oh, well then let's, let's just be okay then, you know? That is one, another little hack I've picked up, I will say, for those of you who have similar struggles as me, is if you, if you can, can, if you can work hard enough, it's really difficult to do, but if you can work hard enough to convince your brain that you're feeling better, um, you will feel better. <clears throat> it's kind of like how when you smile, it tells your brain you're happy, even though you're not happy, but your brain doesn't know the difference. So... Yeah, that's what I do to, what I did yesterday is what I do to treat my PMDD. Um, it's a combination of all those activities, but what makes life difficult, I think, and challenging, especially for a lot of women my age who are mothers, whether we're single parents or not, um, the perimenopausal age. <clears throat> this age is difficult because <laughs> a lot of women, my, so I'm 47, we're caring for ourselves, we're caring for well, I'm caring for a teenager, an 18-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 7-year-old. I know a lot of women my age don't have kids as young as me. But then a lot of women my age are also caring for their parents. Um, my Both my parents are dead. But it's just an interesting age, stage of life because your body is, you know, breaking down. Perimenopause is causing a slew of issues and you're still in a real hardcore caregiving role. Um, and I'm not working full-time right now. So I was actually able to stop meditate, stop, nap, stop, go for a leisurely walk outside. You know, I wasn't always able to do that. And um, and right now I'm interviewing for like three different full-time jobs. <clears throat> because right now, as much as I would love to rest and care for myself and my body and everything my body needs, um, money is of a greater <laughs> priority to survive. So... I just think that's going to be really interesting when it's time. Um, when that time comes, I'm I'm not exactly looking forward to it because. Um, thank you. Thank you for your transparency, Grace. I know or can't imagine how you feel, but it's bringing awareness and I love you for that. Thank you so much, sis. I really appreciate that. That's my girl, Ronnie. We used to go to school together back in ninth, ninth, ninth grade. Yeah, ninth grade. Ninth and tenth grade, um, so yeah, <clears throat> it's just it's just a harder, a harder time of life to care for yourself, um, to do all these things, and I just think back to my late twenties and like early thirties when I was going through all of this, <clears throat> and I was not taking the time to rest or care for myself, and it was just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, <laughs> um, just to the point that I was you know constantly suicidal, and I, I feel like every month. You know, and that's that's happened to me several times. Um, and the difference between being able to rest and care for your mental health is huge um, and not being able to. So, yeah, I truly wish we lived in a world where um, there was some allowances for the kind of things that women go through every month. <laughs> because people think it's just blood. Blood is the, le the least of my issues. That, that part is the, the easy part. It just comes out. I take care of it. It's the mental, it's the hormone, the hormonal ish, and the mental ish that is the biggest, um, the biggest problem for me. But yeah, so I'm just curious how you guys treat your PMDD. Um, there's other things I didn't mention that I do. Um, I do drink raspberry tea. Um, I do have some estrogen, and then a friend got me um, a supplement, a monthly supplement, and I forgot what it's called. I took it. For a month and then I didn't order any more, but I might I might actually order some. I forgot what it's called. If I can remember, um, I will link back to it because that was helpful. Um and I'm not sure if the estrogen worked or not. It's hard to know because sometimes you know situationally stuff happens, but but I do know that it's worth doing the research. Um, if any of you are out there thinking, oh, well, what about you know hormone replacement therapy? Have you looked into that? I have started the process of looking into hormone therapy, hormone replacement therapy, um, for, to, for, for, for treating perimenopause stuff. Um, I am wildly back and forth. <laughs> I'll just say that. I'm, I'm way, 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 way back and forth about it because 
um, I've heard at first there was like all of this that's cancer causing. And then I, you know, then I've heard people saying, you know, like, oh, well, the new research shows that that's been debunked and I just need to do more research. So if anybody has any research and ideas, I would love to hear it, but I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on that. I'd always prefer to treat things naturally, as naturally as I possibly can. Obviously, I still take these antidepressants, which is not natural at all, <laughs> you know, but the the antidepressants really help me. So I'm going to go ahead and keep taking them because they really help. And maybe hormone replacement therapy would. So anyway, I need to get ready for my job interview. And I think if I keep talking, I'm going to just move really, really slow. <laughs> so I'm going to go, but I'm going to come back tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be feeling better. Um, thank you for listening because honestly, it really did lift my mood a little bit just to be on here talking. So thank you for your support and yeah, talk to you later. Bye.